Hi, greetings from Northeast Ohio. This is Suzanne in Ohio. I have a little project to share today. And what you're looking at is a small textile piece that I just finished. And I want to tell you how I got to this. I had um, this bird on another project from way back when. And he looked pretty pitiful, and I didn't like the look of that textile piece at all anyway. That was from back in the day when I was just learning what I was doing. So what I did was cut him off of the surface that he was on, and then I uh, decided to overstitch him some more and doctor him up. Now he is a prothonotory warbler. I'll show him to you up close. He's just gorgeous. Have you ever heard of a prothonotory warbler? I had never. Um, it's so named because um, clergy in the Catholic Church that do record keeping and um, like scribes, I guess, uh, wear yellow robes and they're called prothonotory something or other. So his coloring is the same coloring supposedly as the robes that are worn by those people. Anyways, uh, he looked pretty bad where he was and I decided to keep, create a new background for him. And I tried to veer away from my normal type of style and do something different. And the first thing was I wanted to use everything vintage. And I accomplished that. Um, and I'll point out what I'm showing you here. First of all, I had um, one of those embroidery prints, the print where you're supposed to embroidery over it. I find a lot of those at the thrift store that are either partially stitched or not stitched at all. So I put that in the background, and I wasn't sure at first if I would do the embroidery on top of it, but I, as you can see, I ended up doing that. But I added a bowl for the plant to come out of, and I continued the stems on down as if it's potted in this bowl. And I put this little strip on here to make this look like a vintage piece of kitchenware. I found this vintage um, cross-stitch rose at the thrift store, and the date on it was 1988. And I trimmed it out and laid it on the surface as if it's laying on a table. And then all my background pieces are truly vintage, 1920s, 30s, and 40s. I have found a tremendous amount of feed sack fabrics and old prints at my thrift store. And I have at this point probably, I don't know, a laundry basket full. I'm not kidding. Not lying, as my nephew says, well, if you have to say so. But I'm not. And everything on here, including the rick rack, was in that old stuff. And I wanted the bright colors and, of course, pick up the yellow and red. And this goes with a theme that I had going. So anyways, I put him on my Etsy site. But more than that, I began to think about doing a second and third bird and... What I have ended up doing is using this as an example and created some kits for you to stitch your own birds. So I'll put this here just so you can realize what I'm saying. The kits that I've made are for slow stitching or fabric collage or for that matter a combination of both. And I have already put the kit for one of the birds, which is not this exact bird, but one of the birds on my Etsy site today. And I'm going to show you and walk you through what all the kits, what is involved with them and what all you get and how we can work through this together. My intention is uh, to do a video 
on each and every step of putting something like this together. So if that interests you, keep watching. I think you'll find it kind of fascinating how it all comes together. So let me move this. And the first thing I want to show you is the kits that will be available. So <clears throat> I've already taken this kit apart because this is the one I'm going to work first. But there is a goldfinch and then a rufous sided tohi and a tufted titmouse and a tree sparrow. And all these kits are exactly alike except for the fabric scraps which are appropriate for the coloring of each different bird. But let's start with this one. Well let's start with this because I printed this out in case you wanted to stop your video and take a screenshot because this is a lot of information to retain all at one time. And truly, it is for slow stitching. You can simply just slow stitch or you can fabric collage. And each kit, and I'm going to show you these things individually, includes um, the bird image which is printed on fabric. And that's the beauty of it. You already have a piece of fabric. And a grayscale print, and that will help you with values and contrast. And then there's a line drawing that you can refer to if you need to, or you can trace off that line drawing and turn it into an, just an outline embroidery uh, pattern if you would so choose. There is felt used for batting, a non-woven backing, and then extra non-woven because you're going to be doing some tracing. The scrap fabrics and the dyed laces will all be appropriate for whichever bird. And again, there's American Goldfinch, a Tree Sparrow, Tufted Titmouse, or a Rufous Sided Tohi. And if this, if I get through these four kits, uh, I might add a couple other birds. So what we'll do Here's another opportunity for a screenshot if you so choose. We'll create the bird image using one or more of the following techniques. Because you all know there's lots of ways to execute a piece of textile. There'll be overstitching, embroidery, a scrap fabric that is collaged, extra color enhancement, that's an interesting step. One of the first things you do, I'll show you how to do that. I will be working um, the Goldfinch project first. All of the steps will be video instructions. The color enhancement um, demo, a color enhancement demo using crayon, ink tints, and craft paints. And a proper way of basting so that your image will not scoot around while you're working on it. Um, let's see. Yes, choose where to start. Choosing your style. That is so important because different pieces, according to the way you work them, end up looking totally different. Um, part of that includes dividing the image into zones and tracing and cutting. So the third page, you might want to take a screenshot also. Um, we'll be applying how the applying pieces to the image uh, in the proper order, gluing if you so choose, overlays such as lace, basting again, overstitching which is the slow stitching part. And then this phase, um, deciding on a setting for the bird. That means your background. Creating a background, there's several different ways to do it, and I have many examples. 
you will might want to add other visual elements such as I did in mine which was the bowl and the rose or you might want to add a tree branch or a garden setting of flowers something like that and then you'll be basting a little bit again and then applying your overall slow stitching and perhaps dimple quilting and I'll explain that later and then finishing off your piece you choose what kind of piece you want to end up with or how you want to use it you might want to be doing a small piece and putting it on a journal cover or a large piece which can be a wall hanging um, I use a lot of soft mounting with raw edges I love the look but I'll also show you how to border it off with traditional quilt binding and other options as well okay so that's the outline of what we're going to go through so what I'm going to do today is take this kit apart and give you some examples for every step that we'll be working on so first of all when I put the kits together um, I put this again this color print is on fabric it's on a high quality white muslin and it will be easy to work on but I layered it up for you already because my favorite way of stitching is on a foundation and a foundation with some kind of batting in it now if you choose not to use the felt there's the felt as batting you can remove this and just put another layer of muslin if you so choose and then behind that is a thin thin non-woven substance like you and I know of as Pellon but this is not Pellon brand and what that will do is when you're stitching on this if you will stitch all the way through all three layers you will love how your stitches sit um, better uh, it ends up making your piece look so wonderful and here's your little extra piece of tracing Pellon type stuff and you can see that you can see right through it and I have demoed on it a little bit already and I believe you can see it so I traced his tail the back part of the wing which is back here and the front wing which includes the shoulder area and what you will do after you've divided off your bird into zones you will copy those sections and cut them out separately and this is your pattern to lay on whatever fabric you have chosen um, to execute your bird with so here's a color print that will help you out in many different ways and then you have a grayscale print and that will help you with contrast and um, value so and then uh, the line drawing and you'll find more ways to use that than you can think of right at the moment and feel free to scribble on top of all these things so let me show you let me turn this around so I can follow my own thinking here and what I'm going to do is show you some examples because the first thing we want to think about is the overstitching embroidery and the scrap fabric collage. Which way do you want to do it? So what I've done is print off many different samples. These are Pinterest images and some of my own images to explain what they look like in the end, how to execute them. And by doing this, you will be able to determine which method you want to use for your bird. You might choose a little bit of every method. And for instance, there's um, a Baltimore Oriole when I was first beginning to work on him. He's cut out, he's in place, but he doesn't have any overlay on it yet. So some of these images are to give you ideas for backgrounds also 
and if you're not sure about the how you want to execute it all these images will help you decide but what will your first step be your first step will be to decide right away if you want to color enhance this image now there's three I listed three ways even though there are more we can use crayon on fabric we can use paint or we can use ink tents there's neo color too and other things like that but I chose those three because we really don't have to use water so we want to decide if we want to use this image as is you can stitch right on top of this and you can choose to stitch everything or you can stitch part of it let's say you just want purely a slow stitched image the color is on here to help you fill in the gaps in between stitches and I worked that on my piece let me show you again what I did here this is how I did this bird I painted him on fabric with acrylic paints before I did anything else and his face head and beak virtually have no stitching on them you can look right through the lace and the stitching and see the paint and it's a beautiful surface and it, your eye just blends it all right in so that's what it would mean about color enhancement and we can go about that three different ways now I tested out a little piece of yellow crayon right here on the corner but there's no yellow crayon in my box as bright or brighter than the color that's already on here so on this specific piece I will go over him with ink tints or acrylic paint and I'm thinking I will use acrylic paint because I have one color here that's brighter than most and I will try to not add any water or very little water to it and overpaint him as carefully as I can and I'll probably do his beak also and if you didn't want to end up doing a ton of black stitching you could overpaint the black areas you could overpaint the whole thing and then go back and stitch in the white areas over top of the black as your white definition on the feathers now all the birds have some kind of feet on them I probably will choose not to execute those or include them in my image they are very very tedious and I don't know if I'm in for that much work but there's ways to mount your bird in a setting where you don't have to worry about feet and we'll talk about that as we go so the question is you have to have a little knowledge of over stitching and fabric collage which one do you want to do how much of the bird do you want to cover and anything that you don't want to cover can be color enhanced brighter before you even start then the next thing we'll do is because you might want to you'll want to remove him from this backing that I have him pinned to while you're doing that color enhancement and then we will put him back on here and do the basting there's a special way of basting that will keep him from sliding around and scrunching up and uh, getting wrinkled looking while you're working on him um, I always baste heavily around the edge and I use a fly stitch and then some basting out here just to keep this intact because as you're holding it and handling it it will do crazy things now you could pit, put him in a small hoop if you so desire your entire piece of fabric might not fit in but the four corners definitely will if that's easier for you to work I'm also going to encourage you at every step to use a stab stitch 
rather than a running type stitch. And a stab stitch means that you're going to put your needle straight through all the way so you catch all three layers. So you're going from the front to the back and then the back to the front and so on and so forth. If you're going to do over stitching, whether it's over top of fabric or just over this image, I'm going to talk to you about how many strands of floss to use for whatever look you want. And we'll use some of the printed examples that I have to show you how it will look if you end up doing three strands, two, or one. Some people use all six strands in the floss. I never, never do. It's too chunky of a look for me, but in some places on a bird, it might be appropriate. So that remains to be seen. So that's the first thing we'll do. And then to, if you decide to just over stitch and do nothing but stitching on this image, that's great. But if you decide to fabric collage, <coughs> excuse me, we'll talk about how to divide this bird into zones and decide how many different pieces of fabric you want to use. And for that, you can use either your grayscale image or the colored image that's printed on paper. We'll use a Sharpie marker and go ahead and mark right on this and divide it into sections and then overlay the fiber, draw our pattern, and then cut it out. And when it comes to cutting out, you will choose what piece of fabric you want to use. I'll bring these in here so you can see them. And you will simply cut this out leave plenty of space, excuse me, plenty of space around it and then put your fabric underneath and cut both pieces at the same time. And then there is enough fabric for um, the body, the black spaces, and then all the laces are meant to overlay the fabrics if you so choose. You can lay a piece of lace right over the piece of fabric and end up with a beautiful look. Now to attach those, we can use a little bit of school glue, which will not even show when you're done, or you can use Fabri-Tac, or you can just simply baste it. So those are the steps we'll go through. And then when you're all done, we'll talk about settings. But for a setting, we first need a background. So I have some examples here. Give me just a minute. Let me show you these. Uh, this was a piece I did many years ago. And this bird is purely painted on a piece of fabric. Now, I could have overstitched him, but I wasn't doing that much of that at that time. But I wanted him to sit on this pine tree looking down at this little house. So I created my background from just old textiles. This is an old dresser scarf, dresser scarf, all kinds of pieces like that. And that can become your background foundation. And then here's another example. I created this one the same way. Uh, the Canadian, Canadian Goose is painted on fabric and I created my background. This is a piece of an old, um, it was a pillowcase and it had these water lilies embroidered on it. So I created that background and on this piece I have added a lot of tool, that fine um, wedding tool netting that you might find and I wanted to make all the colors uh, conducive. So we have a dark blue sky up here just because I put two layers of netting over the already blue um, pillowcase. In this case, I 
needle turn appliqued uh, the cattails on here. If I was to do this piece again, I would undoubtedly do a lot of stitching over top of it. Those are two ideas for backgrounds. And then I've got some other things here I want to show you. As we begin to think about a background, we can, uh, let me see if I can back you out here a little bit to, to see this. Whoop. Did I go the right way? All right. I'm not sure how well this will show up. But you can use things like, here's a embroidery dresser scarf. That would be a wonderful piece for a background. You can find all kinds of embroidery uh, patterns that have not been executed. Something like this teapot could be part of your background. Uh, something like this. Even though it's on color, that would work up beautifully. And then here's some more of these embroidery patterns that have not been done. You could include, and there's one partially done, and you could work that into your design. And those are all options. You can also use something like rubber stamps printed on fabric. And I have a whole stack of those here that I keep for doing nothing but creating backgrounds. I also have alcohol dyed lots of pieces of fabric to use as backgrounds. In case I don't want to cover the whole thing, I still basically have something in the background. In this case, these are all done in blue and green because I do so many things that involve outside. So you have plant material on the green surface, blue sky, etc, etc. You get the right idea there. So those are a possibility. Then if you have something else, here's how I cut up my rubber stamps and I've just laid them here as if this is going to be the total background. You could cover your entire background with something like that, or you could take some of these away and add other pieces. Either way will be wonderful. I also have a couple other pieces that I had started um, and I'm working on slowly. So something like this textile could become a setting. You could put more ground down here, mount the bird right here, add things, and slow stitching to something like this would be perfect setting. Here's one I'm still, still has the straight pins in it. So anything that you've got, this is a great way to finish up your projects that have not been completed and maybe you got tired of them or didn't know how to finish them. That happens to me a lot. So um, where are we at here? Now let's assume that you're going to fabric collage. So you're going to cut out your pieces and you're going to apply them to your bird image and then you will have be working on this piece here and you will be putting down little patches of fabric here and there until you have as much or as little of it covered as you want. And then we will start the stitching. Now once you have all of that done, um, and if when the bird is completely done, cut out, you've decided on your backing, then we will go into the process of talking about how you attach him to a background, what other items and elements you want to put in there, and how you want to make him look like he's really at home on that project. All right, so that's pretty much it other than a couple odd examples. Now, I painted this bird with the ink tints, and then I uh, copied him and ran him off on fabric on an inkjet printer. But here's some other ways that something like this could be done. 
<clears throat> I had an extra print of the Rufus side of Tohi, and I filled him in with crayon. And if you've never colored on fabric with crayon, it's a great option. This is all the blacker. I could get the black. And that's all the brighter. I could get the orange. Now, if you want something more subtle like that, that's wonderful. I'm going to see if I can bring it down just a little bit. My camera is not very responsive. But crayon works beautifully on fabric. And I iron it in with a piece of parchment paper over the top. And if you feel like there's a lot of crayon on there, you can uh, run a piece of paper towel. Put a piece of paper towel on it and iron it. You might get some lift off, but I doubt it. But this is a wonderful foundation too. And I might do some practice techniques on him since he was just an extra print to begin with. Okay, that's an odd random little thing to show you. Uh, but here I will show you, um, this was a fully stitched, slow stitched uh, Baltimore Oriole that I had done. He's mounted on um, a page that was going to be part of a fabric book which I never fully executed. But this is how detailed you can get if you want to do fully overlay stitches, slow stitching. I also did just the head and part of the body of a Canadian goose and he's fully stitched. That's what that example is showing you. This example is just showing you even though the focal point is a rabbit, a bunny, you could create a collage background like this. This is all done with fussy cutting prints and some slow stitch. And you could nestle your bird right in there. It can go on some kind of background like that. This is the book cover that I've never finished the book. But here's another fully stitched, in this case, a bluebird. And I did him separately on a piece of fabric like the ones in your kit and then cut him out and put him on here so he's applied to the background as an applique if you want to think of it like that. Now on the back of this book I created this little garden scene and this was intended to be a pocket on the back of the book and then the flower garden came up behind it. You could create something like this and this is all a mismatch of scrap laces that have been dyed. And then of course this is all kind of uh, very fine embroidery. I, at the time I was learning cast on stitch. So those are just some ideas. Um, now let's go back so you can begin to decide how you might want to use this kit. Is it going to be for just slow stitch? Is it going to be just for fabric applique? Or is it going to be a combination? So I'm going to talk quickly about some of these examples. And these are, like I said, these are just Pinterest images. And this will give you a kind of a new idea how to go in there, find some bird images, and and look very closely at how they've executed it. This is a tufted titmouse, which is one of the birds in my series. And this one is done with fabric and practically 100% overlaid with lace. This one is done with flat fabrics part of it raw edge, and then some textured fabric, such as a piece of wool. And this one is with textured pieces and some slow stitching over top of it. And this one is highly um, slow stitched and a few pieces of fabric underneath. Now this one is interesting because 
I think this one was done with paper, but you can get exactly the same look with scraps of fabric. And this is an impressionistic type design where you don't have a set rule about anything. It's slightly a little cattywampus and boy does it end up charming. Here's somebody's work. Uh, they're in the middle of their overstitching over top of simple pieces of fabric. So they're adding a lot of the color with that yellow thread right there. This one looks like, um, well, the bluebird is just how it looks when you first cut your pieces of fabric and lay them in. And so that gives you some idea how it will look or should look before you start stitching. This one's um, a lot of, uh, it looks like upholstery type fabrics. And there she's got some lace overlay and then lots of stitching on top of it. Now let's find something a little bit different. <clears throat> this one is fully fabric collaged with little or no stitching over the duck. Here's a cardinal that is not overstitched at all. And look at the background, a simple piece of blue polka dot. So that's lovely. So you can make yourself a simple, easy project, or you could go into greater detail. And this one might be paper as well, although I don't think it is. It is on a paper background, it looks like. But look at all the different textures and prints of fabrics that have been used. You can <clears throat> use your artist creativity and take your liberties and enhance him <clears throat> any way you want. Excuse me. Here's a photograph of the two that I just showed you and the one that I showed you earlier. And then this is a recent piece I did and it went off as a Christmas gift. But I wanted to show you how you can <coughs> take a saying or words and and this one has saying some words too. This is a Jane Austen quote and this is um, Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. So you can add something like that to your textile piece and give it a lot of meaning. Where this heart is here, I could have placed a bird right over top of that and how cute that would have been. Now we're talking ideas here, just ideas. I believe these two are um, the same artist because they look like the same artist's hand. Um, this is a lot of slow stitching, looks like, like with kind of bulky threads, and it gives it a real painterly look. So that's a possibility. These are nice because this uh, robin gives you, if you look close, you can see that this person probably only used less than eight different pieces of fabric. And are they going to overstitch it? I believe I saw the image with some overstitching over top of it. Here's the fabric in place with straight pins and they're just barely starting their overstitching here around the head. So interesting. This one is done purely with felt. Probably for this person it was genuine wool felt. But craft felt will give you the same look and it's readily available in many colors anywhere, even in the craft section at Joann's. And this bird here, um, it has looks like a lot of wool type fabric, upholstery type fabrics in it with a lot of texture and weaving, and they've overlaid the breast with a piece of lace. And then begin the slow stitching on the head. Now this person has a cleaner, tighter look, I call it. Very few different pieces of fabric and very little overstitching. 
but this artist has outlined everything with a tiny little uh, blanket type stitch it looks like so that's an idea as well now this picture here is um, this blue jay is a picture of a bird collage that my sister did when me, my sewing group and I were all doing these at my house a couple years ago and he was so beautiful and the branches were so intricate we couldn't figure out what would be the best background for him so as not to compete with him so we decided on taking a plain piece of white muslin and she used uh, my cling stamps and permanent black ink and just stamped around on the fabric to give him some background and that worked out beautiful and then here's a simple little piece again I believe this is fabric but I'm not positive sure but it could be executed in fabric this is a clean stylized whimsical style so after seeing all those what style would you choose? Would you color enhance it first? Would you um, just simply stitch right on the the one fabric that I've, that'll come in your kit? And or would you cut out pieces of fabric and use you can use all the methods on this piece. You can color enhance it. You can add some fabric scraps and then you can over stitch and then you can overlay with pieces of lace. Anything you choose will be wonderful. The thing that makes a piece exceptionally nice is the finishing. Sometimes I get discouraged halfway through with a piece <coughs> and that made me think about this one. When I put this bowl on here I just cut it out of a soft white fabric, put it on, and I hated it. It disappeared, and it got too puffy, even though I had basted it. So what I decided to do was add the stitching around the edge to look like shadowing, and then I dimple quilted all over the bowl and it nestled it right into the piece just beautifully so there's a way to fix everything there's a way to execute everything while I have this one here let me show you this is what I call a raw edge soft mounting it simply has a piece of muslin on the back which I tacked around all the edges and to hang it I use a method of little triangles. You just take a square of fabric, fold it into, attach it to each corner, and then your little stick slides right up in that area. And all it takes in is one small tack uh, or nail to hang it, if that's what you want to do with it. So what do you think? Are you ready to create? Are you ready to take on a project? Now there's up close pictures of all the uh, kit pieces on my Etsy site. You can go there and look. And over the next couple days I will have the other kits also listed on there. However, I'm not going to execute any of those until I'm done uh, with this first one, with this goldfinch. And my next video will be about the proper basting. And then we'll go over this stuff again about stitching and how to choose the method you want. And you can follow along with me or you can just uh, tune in and watch what I've done as my next step and follow suit at your laser. All right, well, there's kits available, and I want to thank you so much for watching. This is a long video, I know, but I hope you can get excited about this kit and join the club. All right, from this awful, rainy, gray, Northeast Ohio day, I want to say goodbye and let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comments 
give me a thumbs up if this interests you. And thank you for watching.